Hi everyone. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to use GeoGebra's um, command line as well as uh, uh, transformation tools to construct a geometric proof for Pythagorean theorem. Now, because we're talking about Pythagorean theorem, um, it just makes sense we do need to have an A and a B defined. So, just down here on the uh, on the command line, I'm going to actually define A and B, and I'll just give them a predefined value. So I'll just call A, I'll say that A is going to be set to 2 and B is going to be set to 3. So I've just typed A equals 2, B equals 3. And you'll see up on my algebra um, view um, A and B appear. Now I need to be able to put those A and B on the um, on the visible uh, graph and so I'm just going to use Cartesian coordinates to do that. So, for example, I want to have a point, if I'm going to draw a triangle that goes from 0 to 2 down to 3 and back, I'm going to have to have a point at 0, 2 and a point at 0, 3, or sorry, at 3, 0. So, what I'll do is I'll actually do that as a Cartesian coordinate. So, I'll type in open uh, brackets and I'll do uh, coordinate uh, 0, comma and I want a height of A, so I'll just type the letter A because that's already defined, and immediately you see a point called A that appears at that, uh, at that position. Likewise, I'd like to uh, have a point at uh, 3, 0, and so I'll just do that same trick. I'll go to Cartesian coordinate B, 0. And the reason I use the variables is I'd like to be able to make this uh, fluid and inter interactive for my students. So I'd like them to be able to move A and B around. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to draw that triangle. So I'm just going to take my polygon tool right here, and I'm going to take my A, my B, the origin, and then back to A. And now you can see it's drawn a triangle for me. What I can actually do now is I want to set this up so that the students can manipulate this uh, triangle. So I'm going to actually push the little circle to the left of the A equals 2, and likewise for the B equals 3, and you'll see immediately two sliders appear. The only trouble is that those two sliders don't have any information on them. So I'm going to go to my Select tool, and I'm going to just draw a box around the two of them, and then I'm just going to right click on one of them and I'm going to go to the object properties. Now because this is a slider it has a number of things that it can show. I would like it to show a label so I'm going to click on that and immediately you see A equals 2 and B equals 3 appear. The other thing is I'd like to set some limits so I'm going to go to the slider. Um, because we're talking about uh, the shape of a triangle um, our minimum should really be zero. We don't want to have a negative uh, triangle because uh, that'll make our, our proof a little bit tricky. Maybe for a max, um, just so it all fits on the screen, I might make that a 10. Um, likewise, it's really useful to be able to measure these in integers, so I'm just going to make the increment a whole number of 1. And I'll hit close. And now what you'll notice, if I take my select tool and I drag that little dot around, you'll see first of all that the value above the dot changes, but you'll also notice that the shape of my triangle uh, changes uh, as I move that slider. The next thing that I want to do is um, in order to prove my uh, Pythagorean theorem, I'd like to actually have uh, four copies of this triangle shaped around an interior square. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to do my graphics move tool, this button right here, and I'm going to need a square where this is basically just one corner of that square. Um, there's a couple of ways to do that, but probably the easiest is to simply do a point um, up on this corner. So that corner would be this uh, A plus B and then up. A plus B to get to there. So I'm going to put a coordinate right there and I'll go A plus B comma A plus B and that's going to give me the other side of my uh, large square. Now because I'm revolving this triangle around a central point it is necessary to know what that central point is. So I'm going to go to my point tool and I'm going to pull that down 
and find the midpoint or center tool. Now I'm just going to choose C and I'm going to choose D and you'll see it gives me immediately a point directly between those two. Now all I need to do is to actually rotate this around that point. So I'm going to go to my translation tools or my transformation tools which are right here. I'll pull that down and I'm just going to pick the rotate object around a point by angle. Now it's going to say rotate object around angle, select object to rotate, then center point, and then enter angle. So the object I want to rotate is this triangle. The center point is E. And because we're making a square, I'll rotate it by 90 degrees. And I'll just press OK. And immediately you'll see that I've got the next triangle. Again, I'm still in my uh, rotate tool, so again I'll select the triangle. I'll select the center point, And I'll say 90. Again, I'll select the triangle, select the center point, and again, I'll say 90. Now, because all of these were created relative to one another, my sliders will still work. So if I go back to my select tool, um, I can actually drag these sliders around and show that this trick still works. Now, to make things a bit easier, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to label at least this bottom triangle so students can see where the A and B fit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my text tool, this A, B, and C, and I'm just going to click just underneath the, uh, the B side. And then I'm just going to type in B is equal to, and then under objects, I'm going to look for my lowercase b, which is the, the value I defined and OK. There we go. I'll just position that a little bit. And I'm also going to then take my text tool again, just put it off to the side of this one, and I'll type A equals. And then again on my objects uh, panel, I'm going to scroll up until I find the A that I defined earlier, which is currently 3. And likewise, I can continue to move this around and watch those values change. Now the way the proof works is that it shows that if I take this triangle and this triangle and put them together, along with this triangle and this triangle and put them together, that essentially I have two squares which add up to the area of this third square. In other words, a square where one side is A um, plus a square where one side is B is the same as the square where one side is C. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now in order to make this a little bit clearer, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to color code um, some of my, uh, my lines. Now at this point, I'm almost at the point where I don't really need to have um, um, my uh, algebra view available, but I do have one more coordinate that I do need to place in here. And that's just so that I have a measured distance between this square and the square that I'm about to draw. Since I want to have that square about one unit to the right, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a point that's a plus b or b plus a plus one so that I have this bottom corner. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and I'll just do a, a coordinate that's at a plus b plus one comma zero. That gives me a point right here, and that's just so that I have a consistent spacing. So as you can see, as I uh, manipulate my slider, that spacing is always the same. Now before I uh, create the second square and begin my translations, it's good to actually have a sense of uh, which, uh, which one of these triangles is which before I do that. So I'm going to actually change my view a little bit. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is actually on my perspectives menu, I'm going to choose geometry. Now what that does is that changes the look and feel of my uh, GeoGebra page. First of all, to get rid of that, uh, that panel, it also gets rid of the axes, although you can bring that back if you choose to. And it brings in the grid view, as you can see here. That makes things look a little bit cleaner, and it also gives you access to this extra little toolbar, which uh, allows you to adjust properties. So, for example, if I wanted to make this triangle a different color, I simply click on it, and you'll see this has now got a little swatch here. And so maybe I'll make these two opposite triangles blue and green. 
and so I'll make this one blue and down here I'll make this one green. This I'll probably do an orange and a uh, um, brown here so maybe I'll click on that one and I'll make that orange and I'll click this one here and make that uh, maybe a deep yellow just so that it, I can tell which ones belong together. The other thing that I now need to do is to actually move these triangles and duplicate these triangles over into this space. And so I'm going to use actually another transformation tool called Translate. And so maybe what I'll do is the first step is I'll just take this triangle and I'll translate it over to here. So I'm going to uh, go into my Translate menu or Transformations menu and I'm going to choose Translate Object by Vector. And I'm going to ask that this triangle be moved from this point over to this point. And immediately you see that there's a duplication of that triangle right here. I'm going to continue that process and I'm going to uh, take the matching triangle, this guy, and I'm going to move it so that this point in the corner is over here and you can see now they're joined together as one. Likewise, I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to move him so that this corner um, gets placed over here. And I'm going to uh, take this guy and move him so that this corner gets placed over here. Now at this point, the graph is really messy. However, I can easily fix that by choosing my uh, select tool. And now holding down the uh, control key on a PC or the command key on a Mac, I'm going to click on each of these vectors and now I'm going to go to my edit and I'm just going to go show hide objects and you'll see all of those arrows just magically disappear. Um, now the last piece of this is I need to draw um, squares to represent the area of the square that's blocked in first of all by the C squared in this case or the A squared and the B squared in this case. So I'm going to just do that. I'm going to pick my um, polygon tool here and I'm going to click there and there and there and there and there. And now to draw the uh, square in here, I'm actually going to choose my regular polygon tool, which is this guy right here. And I'm going to draw between the eye and this point here, I'm going to actually draw a line. Oops, let's try that again. Uh, from eye to here, and it's going to say how many sides, so it's a square, I'll pick four. And it always draws it on the left of the line that you create, so that worked right there. Um, in this case, I'm going to go backwards because I want it to go below, so I'll click on this point and this point, and again, four, so that you can see that it's sitting below. Again, um, that is the important piece, so I might actually change my uh, coloring a little bit. So uh, again, I'll go to my Select tool. I'm going to Command or Control click on all three of these, and I'm just going to... Um, uh, change the object properties and I'll go to color I'll leave the same but style I'm actually going to go instead of uh, standard I'll go to a hatch and you can see that what it's done now is it's created a, uh, a hatched pattern just so that we can see that as a different thing and uh, really all I need to know now um, I mean you can explain this to students that because the triangles that we've got in the shape are the same. You can see that these two triangles are these two triangles, and that these two triangles are these two triangles, um, that um, the area left over, which is this thing or this and this together, um, must be the same. Um, however, that might cause some, uh, some dissent or confusion, so we can actually prove that um, by simply taking our measurement tool and clicking on area. Now if I click inside this hatch area you'll see that I get my little box up here and it says the area is 25. Um, that's a little hard to see so I'm just going to use my move tool to uh, uh, bring that up top here and so you can see that the area of that is now 25. 
Um, likewise, I'm going to uh, choose my area tool and click on this and that. And